Hello friends and welcome to the Southern Mountain Kitchen. Today we're going to make peanut butter oat and chocolate bars. So what you see on my counter is what we're going to use to make these and I got to tell you it couldn't be less ingredients. This is so easy to make. There's not that much going into it. You got some oats, some creamy peanut butter, some honey, you got some milk chocolate chips, and then you have some coconut oil, which we're going to use to actually put in the chocolate to make sure that it has a little bit of a shine to it, doesn't have that dull look when you make up your food. Um, and other than that, that is it. Really, this is not hard, but it makes the most amazing tasting candies that they're just really wicked to eat. But I got to tell you, eat them quickly because when I made this, they didn't hang around my house for long. People just ate them right up. So this is an amazing thing and you're getting some oats in it, which isn't half bad. So we're going to take an eight by eight glass dish that I have here. I'm going to spray it with some nonstick cooking spray and then I'm going to put parchment paper over top of that. The reason being is this is going to make it easier to remove this from the pan when it's done. So all you got to do is get this in there. Push out on the sides with your fingers to make sure that the parchment paper adheres to the cooking spray that we put in. And you literally have a barrier here that's going to hold this in place. And then once it's chilled, ready to come out and ready to cut, we literally just pick this up on the sides and bring it out and cut it. So in a large bowl, we're going to start out with our peanut butter. And we're putting into this at least three-fourths of a cup of creamy peanut butter. So we want to get that all in there. And then afterwards, we're going to bring in a third of a cup of honey and add to this. And once it's in, we're going to mix it up because we want to get this completely combined together because this is going to be the stuff that's going to hold the oats together. So get all of that inside of there. Um, get the honey out as best you can. Um, just a tip, spray that if you have your honey you're putting it in a bowl, spray it with some nonstick cooking spray and you'll be able to get it straight out without an issue. And once this is in our bowl, we're going to go ahead and mix it up completely. So make sure you stir this around till everything is pulled in. And then after we get that done, we're going to move on to our oats, which we're going to use one and a half cups of rolled oats. So get those poured in and then we're going to stir them into the mix. Now, as you're stirring this in, it's going to get a little stiff after you go for a while because putting all these oats into the peanut butter and the honey, it's going to take a little bit of work with your spoon. But if you keep working and keep moving it, it will all combine together. We just want to get to a point where there's not really loose oats all over the place. And we want to see that it's all combined together to where it really looks like one lump, one mass of stuff before we go to use it. So keep mixing this up. And just make sure that you pull everything in from the sides and the bottom of the bowl. Now, as you can see, there's quite a lot in here. But what we're going to do with this is take it once it's all combined together and press it into the bottom of the dish that we prepared with the parchment paper. So just go ahead and keep mixing until you get it all in there. And as you can see, as you keep going, it starts to collect together. So now that it's done, kind of just scoop it all into one ball or whatever. Dump it in. doesn't matter how it goes in because we're going to actually press this down with the spoon. So go ahead and clean your bowl. Make sure you get all everything out of it. And then just take it and move it around until you can actually press it all corners, all sides, get some of this in. Now, if you have to move it around a little bit with your hand, go ahead and do that. The best thing about this is, is as you're pushing it, it's going to start to take shape. And what's really good about having a spoon to do this is you can push it into the corners as you're working the bottom of this. And once it gets completely covered and you press down enough, it'll be like a sheet of this stuff completely across the bottom. And that way it's going to be solid and it will hold together when you go to cut this later. So just go ahead and work it till you get it all out. And as you can see with mine, it moves around a little bit, but it presses where I need it to. And you want to make sure you don't have a lot of ripples in this. We want to make it as flat as possible. So just keep moving it all over the place until you get it to where you want. And the best thing about this is as this is sitting on that parchment paper like that, when we refrigerate this and bring it out later. You literally are just going to pick that parchment paper up and everything on top is going to come with it. And that way it's not really a huge ordeal to get it out of your actual pan because I've seen things stick to a pan before and it's nearly impossible to get them out without breaking it. So just keep pressing this until you're done with this part. And then we're going to move on to our chocolate. So what we're going to use is about a cup and a half of like milk chocolate, chocolate chips here. Um, if you wanted to use a different kind, like something like semi-sweet or whatever, you could do that. And to this, we're adding one tablespoon of coconut oil. 
And like I said before, the coconut oil is just going to help the chocolate shine, look really good, hold its shape, everything. It'll look really neat. And like, I've seen chocolate before when you make it at home. It gets really dull and kind of like, you know, it, it doesn't have any shine at all. We don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up a little bit to get that coconut oil all over top of this. And when we get it totally coated, it's going to go in the microwave for up to two minutes, but you're going to do it in there for like 20 second burst and stir it till it's completely melted. And if you do that and it comes out earlier than two minutes, it's perfectly fine. And once you get it mixed up, we're going to pour this over top of what we already had in our dish. So just stir it, make sure there are lumps in the bottom of it, nothing hard. And then just bring it over, pour it out, get every bit of this out that you can and just take your spoon and move it from side to side all the way into the corners to make sure everything is coated. And there's more than enough chocolate here to do this. Um, I kind of like to make a decent layer of chocolate on top of this. I mean, you know, if you just don't want anything but a thin layer, you could actually knock this back to a cup's worth. But I think a cup and a half kind of does really well. And anyway, once you get this all scraped out, like I said, just run your spoon over top of it. Just make sure it's all smooth and into the corners. And it's really easy to deal with this stuff for quite a while after it comes out of the microwave. It's not going to like harden up on you in just a second. But as you can see with mine, it's very easy to work with. It's very easy to move. But when you get this done, you probably want to put this in the refrigerator for about an hour or something before you bring it back and you try to do anything with it. Because we want it to really set up and want that chocolate really hardened and everything. And this is mine when it came back. See how easy this comes out. If you just pick up on the parchment paper, you just pull it right on out of there. Then pull the sides and everything back. And that way you can get ready to cut it at this point because it's all set up. See, this is the beauty of using parchment paper. Now, you're going to need a long knife to cut it when you do something like this. So, I just used a very long knife that I had. Um, and just go straight across it in one direction and then come back and do it in the other. And the best thing about this is it really sets up well. It stays together. These are amazing to eat. And it's something where, you know, it could be a snack or just something you wanted to make for somebody to give them something neat to eat or whatever. It's just one of those things where this is such a good thing to have. Because if you're a chocolate lover, you've got it. But then you got something decently healthy in there like oats, but you have peanut butter and everything as well. And it just has such a great taste when you put all of this together. So it's, it's really something that's worth having or if you just want to make it to share with someone, it's a really cool thing. Um, but as you're cutting this, you can see, just put the knife over top, put a little pressure to it, and it cuts right through. And that's the best thing about it. And then basically, this is all cut up. And as you can see, it's solid underneath it's really great they look really good and the best thing is they just really there's something that people will enjoy because there's a little something in there flavor wise for everybody and this is what mine looked like on a plate when i was getting ready to eat it and it looks amazing and it tastes even better i think you just might like this i hope you liked this video and if you did please like and subscribe and if you get a chance check out the southern mountain kitchen website where you can get a free recipe check out the cookbooks available from the southern mountain kitchen and if you'd like to you could order a cookbook at a discounted price cheaper than amazon with shipping that is also cheaper than amazon so if you get a chance check it out and i hope you have a great day